Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, one of the coordinate systems that you need to be very familiar with is polar coordinates. So typically, we're only going to worry about two dimensions. A lot of the motion that we deal with is just two dimensional. So we can have an x, y coordinate system. That is, of course, our good old Cartesian coordinate system, just collapsed into two dimensions. But let's say I have a point out here. And I know that it has some x, y coordinate in that Cartesian space. But now I want to define that in terms of some other variables. What could I use? Well, one possibility is how far are you from the origin? Right? And that we typically use lowercase r. And that maybe is enough, but not quite, right? Because if I just told you r, you could be anywhere on a circle of that radius r. So we need one more variable, and the variable that we're going to use is theta. What's the orientation of that line with respect to the x-axis? And so these are called polar coordinates, r and theta. To be technically correct, the three coordinate systems that you need to worry about as you go further in physics are the Cartesian coordinate system, cylindrical coordinate system and spherical coordinate system. And this would correlate more towards the spherical coordinate system. Okay? But in two dimensions, we call it polar coordinates. How far are you from the origin? That's r. What's your angle relative to the x-axis? That is theta. And now you can see what happens. There is a nice little relationship between these things. So if I draw that line again, I complete the triangle make this a right angle, and this is theta, then that xy coordinate up there corresponds to what? Corresponds to moving over in x by that amount, moving up in y by that amount. And so now we have a nice little triangle, and we know how to deal with triangles. Good old Sokotoa, right? What is the cosine of theta? Somebody shout it out. Raise your hand and shout it out. What's the cosine of theta in this picture? X over R. Cosine theta equals X over R, right? Sokotoa. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What about sine of theta? This is an easier one if we already got the first one right. Who knows what sine of theta is? Y over R. Go ahead. Raise your hand. Y over R. Y over R. Why not? Absolutely. And then finally, tangent of theta is going to be Y over X. All right, so those are our nice uh, trig relationships for this particular triangle. But we also have Pythagoras, which told us that the hypotenuse of the right triangle is the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Okay, so all those things describe how r and theta relate back to our Cartesian coordinates, x and y. Now, there is also a very uh, nice sign convention that we have, which is the following. Thetas that are going up are bigger than zero. Thetas that are going the other way are less than zero. Namely, if you are rotating counterclockwise, that's positive. If you're rotating clockwise, that's negative. Okay, now this is just a convention. We're not always going to use that, but that is the typical convention for these signs. All right, so let's try, let's try an example. Let's try an example of a problem uh, looking at polar coordinates for a, uh, a simple set of coordinates, and let's start with x equals negative 3, y equals 4, and let's ask the question, what is r and what is theta? All right, so x, y being negative 3, 4 means we are in a particular quadrant here. And if we mark off x equals negative 3, that would be 1, 2, 3. 
and y equals 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So where those two lines intercept, that's the point that we're interested in right there. Okay, that is negative 3, 4. All right, and now we're faced with the question, what is r and what is theta? Well, r is, of course, how far are you from the origin? So that is r. What is theta? Theta is how far are you around from the x-axis? So theta, in our case, looks like that. All right, now what do we do? Well, I think we can go back to our trig relations and figure out how r and theta relate to this particular x and y. And let's redraw this triangle to visualize that. Okay, so let's redraw it right here. Okay, I've taken this triangle right here and I've redrawn it right there. The hypotenuse of the triangle is R. The bottom of the triangle has a magnitude of three. We know it's negative, but it has a magnitude of three. And we know that the vertical side is four. So, what does R have to be equal to? Anybody heard of a right triangle that starts with a three and then goes to a four, what's the third side equal to? Anybody know that one? Yeah. Five. Five. It's a three, four, five triangle. Okay, that's one of those special right triangles. Let's just convince ourselves that that is true. R is equal to the square root of three squared plus four squared, which is the square root of 9 plus 16, 9 plus 16 is equal to 25, and the square root of 25 is, of course, 5. Okay. Now, if I had put a negative 3 right there, would it change anything? No, because we'd be squaring that whole quantity. All right. So negative 3 squared is the exact same as 3 squared. We end up with the same answer. Now let's think about theta. Theta in this picture is a large angle. It's bigger than 90 degrees. And that doesn't really map very nicely to our triangle anywhere. But we can probably say something about that angle right there. And then what we can say is the rest of the angle is theta. And so right off the bat, we know that phi plus theta has to equal 180 degrees. Okay, phi plus theta is equal to 180 degrees. If we can determine what phi is, then we know exactly what theta is. So, Let's look at this triangle again. And what should I use to calculate phi? What do you guys think? Do I need to use sine? Do I need to use cosine? Do I need to use tangent? Or could I use any of them? Yeah, what do you think? You can use any of them. Why can I use any of them? Because um, it's just either like opposite over adjacent or Exactly, and in fact, we now know all sides of that triangle. Yeah. So if you know all sides of the triangle, then you can use any of those, right? So which one do you like? Um, I guess cosine. Or cosine, <laughs> excellent choice. Cosine of theta. In this case, cosine of theta is what? Well, we're, sorry, we're doing phi. Cosine of phi is what? Well, phi is this little angle right here. So cosine is going to be adjacent, which is 3, divided by the hypotenuse r, which we said was 5. All right, so you can plug this into your calculator. Take the arc cosine of 3 over 5. And 
What do you get? Anybody have their calculator with them? What'd you get? Uh, 53.1 .1 degrees. 53.1 degrees. All right, let's just call that 53 degrees. And if that angle's 53 degrees, then what does theta have to be? Theta is, of course, 180 minus that phi. 180 minus phi is 180 minus 53 and we get 127 degrees. Okay, hopefully that one is clear. Uh, if you have any questions about it, come see me in office hours. Cheers. Thank you.